gave a uh, one, maybe two presentations uh, last year. Um, are you now 17? So last year he was 16, youngest presenter ever, knows more about electricity and engineering, a lot of these old type of uh, devices than most um, seasoned uh, electrical engineers. And uh, he has been replicating quite a bit of Eric Dollard's work. Last year he presented on some of his replication of Eric Dollard's um, seismic research, uh, measuring like electrostatic signals from the ground and showing the graphs. and. Doing this with uh, relatively simple, um, you know, instruments and the wire and the meters and making it really, really simple for people. And he is a very prolific experimenter that charts and graphs and records like everything. And if you look at his website and uh, pretty much everything he does is not only built to replicate the results of a lot of these old... Uh, uh, devices from the late 1800s, early 1900s, but they also look like they came right out of that era. Um, he's a high school student. Are you in uh, 11th grade? Yep. 11th grade right now down in California. And uh, it's kind of funny because some of the uh, glomming episodes that Eric has had in the desert over the years, um, he would be in a car and his mom is on the lookout while uh, him and someone else is out there looking at what they can scavenge off of the poles and stuff. And, uh, his mom is a lookout driver. So Griffin has a web. What's your uh, website address? Griffingbrock.com. So Griffingbrock.com, and I believe there is a PayPal donate link on there. Yes. And so if you want to help support somebody who is one of the most brilliant young experimenters in this field, uh, come up and uh, donate cash, checks, money orders. Um, he puts it to use. Uh, what that money is intended for goes exactly to his experiments and he's cranking out more experiments and getting uh, more results in a shorter period of time than most people that I know. Uh, on his website, griffingbrock.com, there is a PayPal link so please do whatever you can to share that with people, let people know about Griffin, his website and his work and encourage them to donate uh, to him to help support his efforts. In this presentation, uh, he's going to be speaking on uh, Tesla's high-frequency illumination methods and apparatuses, along with some uh, demonstrations. So help me welcome Griffin Brock. And going into the popularized theory of the 100 volts per meter, which isn't obviously constant, we could see that in means which we'll be able to use later with this analogy that the ground or any objects which are directly on the ground and not in an elevated capacity situation, it becomes the ground. So you have, you're acting as one terminal. So in this case, the actual potential will rise in accordance with the height of the object that's on the ground. Now, of course, this only applies to long distances. So if you have a large field without any obstructions or any objects present on that field, and you only have one person for acres and acres, then of course you'll get a noticeable change in voltage potential. Now, in, in areas such as crowded cities, you have multiple sky rises and a almost constant height of objects within the vicinity, so thus the actual concentration would be higher, and anybody below the skyline would not make a difference since the actual height of the buildings and other objects present are the main ones contributing to this dip of potential. And going back in history, we can actually see that means of isolating this potential through actual insulating means, or so-called insulating means, rather than having it directed to the Earth. In this case, in 1928, Hermann Plassen created a field, or this is actually a illustrative depiction of what is called electrostatic collectors. Now, this is an idealized way that he pictured it. Now, in his case, he actually created only one of them and created a more elaborate setup between two mountaintops. But, of course, we could still see the typical insulated body, which possesses some type of dielectric uh, collectors or, in a way, some type of agitation, which is able to stimulate the field around it, the actual lines of force present, and ultimately collect it since it's an insulated body and does not necessarily have anything to do with the ground itself. Now, in a way, this would be collecting the natural means of potential that's present, but of course, with the whole system of interference and the presence of AM radio stations in this present day, 
then there is a mixture of artificial and man-made means of potential, and to actually filter it out would require very um, complicated analysis. And if we go into the actual practical methods or the somewhat practical methods which have been employed, employed in this case, uh, this one was done in France and it was also shown in a French newspaper in 1978 and it was of a local farmer who employed a radio system which, uh, create, uh, which possessed some type of vegetation brush or which looks like a broom, an upside down broom. And this of course stimulates and agitates the local field, the dielectric field which is present between the ground and the ionosphere, upper atmosphere. Now in this case it appears that the post is on an insulating staff, <coughs> excuse me, it's on an insulating staff as represented here by the insulator. So you do create some type of isolation from ground, thus creating a potential voltage difference. And going into the insulated method or the independent method, this is a visualization where you have some type of capacitive mast. In this case, it's more of a dis um, distributing capacitive mast where the lines of force are somewhat more evenly distributed rather than these corners, which would, um, we would see a little more of an agitation. But if we were to actually collect it or uh, disrupt, uh, sorry, disrupt the field, then you would need something such as this brush. But in this case, we have some type of voltage potential depending on the height and just the actual electrical activity of the ionosphere at that given time, which in seismic forecasting, this actually proves to be a decent method and is in a way a basis for a typical Marconi or Hertzian antenna method. We have the generalized conception that we have some type of capacitance which supplies a representation or acts as a upper strata or an ionospheric um, effect. And then we have the pot down here, which is connected to the other end of the flyback so that we have a potential difference of high concentration. And depending on the pot, this could be adjusted and this could be moved around. Now, of course, for larger pots, you would need something more practical. So you need a larger density or larger capacitive plate. And this is the flyback used. We can see that it's a simple 70 kilocycle, 80 kilocycle. Well, this one is act this one was measured at 80 kilocycles, but the one I'm using is only 70 kilocycles and provides a decent HF high potential system for this process. Now, actually, going um, instead going back into the system, not of uh, seed generation, but actually reviving plants, or I should say, bringing them back from the dead. This was a pot or a dead plant that was left in the sun, left in 90 degree, close to 100 degree weather for months on end. We could see that the connection one end is connected to a capacitive top load, or a python in this case, which is able to evenly disperse the lines of force into the soil. And the other end is connected to a small plate, which is present near the roots of the plant, which is located near the center of the pot. After 10 days of treatment and removing the dead leaves so that to allow new growth to appear, we see fresh new green growth to start sprouting on the actual branches of the plant. And after nine day, 19 days of treatment, that is keeping it inside and not exposing it to sun, this was obtained. So we ultimately and effectively revived the plant from its deathbed and allowed it to become revived again.